right side of him, uh, Doug uh, Pierce heading up Pitcher Pay for the first time. Not a great deal between them. You can throw a blanket over the entire field as they almost seem to crawl up Pitcher Pave Hill for the first time. And a blanket over the entire field is about all we haven't seen in Formula B racing because everything else seems to happen and they are very close on this first lap. Peter Redke is the race leader. We'll wait on him as they come down the back part of the circuit. There you can see he has any number of challenges and they're going to be around him, inside of him and outside of him on the approach to Honda. But Peter Ratke, a wise old man in this Formula V competition, about to take the right-hander through Honda and on the approach down to Rothman's corner. Car number two, the race leader, Peter Ratke. Doug Pierce, car 11 in second place, followed by Doug Grievous and then car 51, the Elfin. There's Glenn Evans in car 20 who's been in perpetual trouble. There's water on the track. The result of the rollover where they've been washing the circuit away, he picked up the water on his tyres and Evans went for a long skate which persisted down the grass and he's dropped back a fair way. Peter Ratke already under a bit of uh, pressure here. He is at number 11 and completed one lap. And he perhaps the distance, seven to go. And, uh, going over the top for the uh, second time. Getting to notice the race leader. Caught a little wide here, but he manages to come in. I hope everyone else appreciated that, but he still holds command through uh, Dunlop Corner. I mentioned he tends to be a bit aggressive, and you saw it then. He yes. was uh, really outgunned for the corner, but came back and took the line, and Pierce it was who had to move over and hit the inside edge, forced the car up into a two-wheel gate for a few seconds, got it back again, dropped back some distance, and now he once more, Pierce is resuming the challenge on Peter Radke. And they come in so tight there on that corner. Pierce, when he makes his move on Radke, he's going to have oh, to set it up. There's 20 once again. Glenn Evans, who went off wide before, has gone off again. Not his own fault this time. He's dodging the car that has spun itself into oblivion in the dust there. You can see 75 sitting there. That's Peter Moore in the Elfin. It was he who uh, was involved in the spin. I suspect he got a touch. And uh, Evans, for the second time on that corner, had himself an untidy exit. He must be wondering what he's got to do to get around that corner cleanly. In the meantime, back up among the leaders, as they say, once more. Pierce Doug makes Pierce. another try. That's right, exactly the same line as last time. Let's see whether Redke cuts him off as he did last time. He's got the ground there. He's gone on the fast line through, and he should take the line, which he does. Takes a very wide line, which will give him a pretty good... Whoops! Should have given him a pretty good way through the corner, but he took a very tight approach at the apex here. Lifted the wheels up. Car three, Paul uh, McDonald in the Nimbus has moved up into third place. Doug Pierce still in second place, one leaving the scene of the uh, crime up in the top part of the circuit. But here is our race leader, Peter Radke, car number two, taking the left hander at Honda, followed by Pierce in number 11, then number three, which is Paul McDonald running in third place. Radke at this stage has a, well, a small gap, <laughs> a small lead. That's probably. Uh, the best part of a lead he's had since the race started. Comes up to Ron Hodson, the right-handed, that leads back onto uh, the main straight, the finishing straight here at Amaru Park for the completion of two laps and six remaining. Once again, up the hill. This time we'll see whether Ratke's going to be challenged. Pierce sits in behind him. This time tries the other side, but that's not going to work this time. He didn't really uh, have enough revs built up. McDonald's the one who's got the line yes. there, Mike, in fact. He came up very well under slipstream. He's got second place. It's a little bit of a slip show around Amaru Park. There's Peter Radke, still the race leader. And McDonnell has advanced from third to second. We'll see if he can carry on with it and throw a challenge at the race leader, Peter Radke. You know, anyone in these first five could win. Such is the nature of Formula Vs. Most of the drivers don't like leading on the last lap unless it's a long lead because they know the others can get a slingshot effect past them. Donald's going really well. He came off uh, sixth position on the grid and he's now up in second place and pushing the race leader, Peter Radke. The two who've joined them are Don Grievison in car 51 and David Turnbull in car 21. They make up the top five. Peter Radke about to receive the wrath here of uh, Paul McDonald. McDonald has tagged right in behind him. We'll sit behind him. He hits that slipstream. Pulls out probably a little early, I would have thought that time. I think so. He seemed very well placed, but maybe he made just a premature move and he won't get Oops. by there. Oh, there's a touch. Riddle nudge. Mm. Peter Redke just reminding him that he's around. Yes, and it's his racetrack and uh, he frequents this circuit uh, quite often. So uh, I think Peter Redke has signalled to uh, two challenges so far that the track is so wide they'll have to use all of it because he seems to be taking up all of it. Peter Radke again coming down to the left-hand turn at, uh, at Honda. He always seems to have a good lead going in here, although uh, McDonald is not going to settle for second best. He moves right up on his tail, now with the vein straight. New air-conditioned effect for the car <laughs> 69. 
down into the bottom corner and the challenge is on with McDonald and Radke. Terribly hard. That's when you wish you had two more arms. It's Don Angus in car 69 uh, with um, his hand violently clutching the, uh, the upper half of the bodywork to keep it on. But here's Radke, the race leader, closely pressed by uh, Paul McDonald again. McDonald pulls out. Oops, he's going to give no. him a little slide job over the top, the left-hander, and uh, try and get himself set here. McDonald can't move back to get back under him. And Radke, as you can see, is running them ragged at this stage. And Grievous and McTurnbull are still very well placed back there in fourth and fifth place, because anything could happen among these leading cars, as you can see. Well, Radke is setting a good pace, but uh, it's not a pace that the others can't stay on, Evan. I, you just notice the way that they've all closed up on him, but... Uh, I think they're drawing lots to see who's going to have a shot at him. Yeah, maybe the loser has a go. Well, no. looks like Pierce has decided uh, he's drawn the, the outside, the death seat. We'll wait and see what happens down to Rothmans. He's taking the outside run this time on McDonald. And now we'll try and swing back underneath him and get the inside run coming off the corner up to Ron Hodson. Radke there, probably keeping an eye uh, on both mirrors. McDonald likely to pose the most serious challenge, not just by his place, but by his experience as well. Comes up very early then, just to try and guarantee he's got the close line, which Redney just moves over to it there, quite legitimately. But uh, look at them all closing up now. It's almost three at rest in the second spot. I wonder how he's going to handle three of them, because uh, uh, McDonald was caught uh, a little wide. Oh. Well, Pearson lost out to... Um, car 21 which is David Turnbull who's now up in third place and Pearson wondering what's going on he's going further and further back as the race progresses well, probably it's an arrangement now it's Turnbull's time to have a shot at the leader <laughs> well he's up there now in third place and making a move here to come through on the outside uh, not a popular move as far as McDonald's concerned and the two of them now having a real go at Peter Ratke our race long leader Ratke doing a, a very good job by fair and foul means Nothing foul about the fact he's using up all the racetrack. He's using it to his advantage, certainly, because the speed difference between the front running six cars is negligible. Onto the straightaway once again. Just look how close they are, viewers. Oh, slingshot down the outside. Radke, I think, will hug the guardrail all the way up to the top of the picture page. And he's going to find McDonald now. And one trying to do rally cross on the outside as they go over the picture page. That's Turnbull, who's taking a terribly dangerous line there, but he might just get it. No, he hasn't. He's going to be content with second and a half. Turnbull, if he makes a, a glaring error here, is going to take out McDonald at the same time, leave Radke unchallenged. Nothing between them, the, the front running five cars in this uh, Formula V event for Coca Cola. Radke adding plenty of life to this. Yes, about two and a half left still to go in this race. Radke still in the lead there. Oh, a big challenge there for McDonald. That's the way to get it. He can just get inside and get your back legs up there. Not quite, though. He'll try and make a move, I would think, before Rothmans. And he's not letting Radke know which way he's going. Just as Radke's not telling him which side of the road he wants, he takes a little bit of each. Now, the inside shot, if he can do it. No, he can't. Radke has just enough uh, torque to pull out of that corner. Right. And it really thwarts every every opportunity yes. that comes the way of McDonald. The key part of this race for McDonald was this next bit. He's never quite got it right. Where to go? He no. goes a bit too early always, pulls out. Now he's got a bit of a chance, though. He gets that real slingshot move there, but can he hold keep on the outside? Oh, yes. He's past him. Oh, almost a touch. It depends how he's corrected from it. He's and in front. McDonald's in front, yep. He's done it at last. Oops. And <laughs> it's time for he's, everyone to attack he, Radke. He's giving Radke a bit for his corner now. I he's think he's going to, yes, you're right there. Look at this, down the inside. Radke's going on the grass if need be. No, he said that's a bit too hard, but he'll have another go. Radke, a very aggressive driver. He's not going to give up. He's going to get back there as quickly as he possibly can, but there are drivers nibbling away at him. Honda corner should be dynamite, folks. Stay I don't know how many of them will come out of it, but they're all going into it quickly. Radke is caught about mid-track. Got a little sideways coming off that turn. Now down vein straight, looking for the right-hander, and here he tries the slingshot on the grass. And he's got to get it. But McDonald will probably swing back underneath him, coming off the corner, which, which he, he tries, to, tries do. to do. And we have a little challenger there who is trying to rub the signs off the fence on the outside. That's David Turnbull, well, this who's is well placed. Well, the three track. of them could end up in Ron Hodson's corner, which will take all the advertising off. But side by side, with one lap to go, would you believe it? The last lap, they are touching wheels. There are five cars. <laughs> a chance. Pierce oh, is having to go <laughs> Well, there are no big partners in this Formula V racing. It's McDonald who'll lead. He'll be glad when the race is over. It's been a pretty hair-raising sort of experience. There's Radke trying again. He's going to take it up on the wall on the outside, if need be. He'll go anywhere to try and get by. It's desperation stage now with 
McDonald back in the lead again. Radke making a move there. He's having a good look up the exhaust pipe. Decides he can't fire down that way. He's got himself three corners to get by. Well, it won't be this corner, I hope, because uh, there's a concrete wall on the left-hand side. Now, we might see it. Probably the, the, the big race is going to be the last corner. This and is the last Radke desperate go up. for Radke. Here he goes. And he's not, he can't understand why McDonald's cutting him off. <laughs> He read the Radke book on better driving. <laughs> and on the outside, there's Pierce going there to Suicide Alley. But look at him flying up on the outside. Three abreast. Three abreast into Ron Hodge's corner. I have never seen it before. And there, he's oh, in inside right there. Spun Pierce there. Inside. Pierce has gone with car 21 turnable. There, been and Radke Which wins it. Radke, Radke wins it. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. I think Alan Grice is doing the scripting. <laughs> I was going to tell you who came third. I wasn't watching that. Uh, the Radke won that phenomenal race. The crowd there, they don't know whether to believe it or not, but they're clapping and they're talking among themselves. And ladies and gentlemen, that's just a typical race for Formula Bs. <laughs> and Radke says the best boy won. The fellow who ran second uh, is not quite so certain about all that. Well, an incredible last corner. No room for faint heart in this business. And Turnbull came on the outside. I have never seen anything like that. Three cars coming to Hudson. There's Turnbull in 11. And then uh, the exuberance of that took him. And uh, I would think uh, probably the answer to this would be to have the second place man, Paul McDonald, present the, uh, the trophy. The to trophy Ricky, to uh, <laughs> look, and he's still hot about it too. He's been trying to catch him up and wave a finger at him. I think I don't think he's going to congratulate him. Maybe they don't know the race is over. No, I see. He's just sort of proving the way things should have been. Not very happy about that. But let's face it, a fairly spectacular race. He'd be just sensational in Formula Five now. He'd be temporary too. <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> And so it's Peter Redke going round to the winner's rostrum. We'll be talking with him soon, and that should be a very interesting conversation, which will follow very soon from this live telecast at Amaru Park. Breath, Peter. Oh, sure, eh? That was hard work. I think that's probably the hardest I've worked for quite a long time. You didn't have a moment's rest in the whole of the ten laps? It wasn't peaceful. <laughs> it was real hard work. I'm you didn't sure know about the contretemps behind you in the last corner? Uh, I've seen it, yeah, but I was too busy with uh, other things. <laughs> <laughs> to make the presentation on behalf of Coca-Cola, we have Mr George Newbold. Uh, thanks very much, Peter. Very fine race. And on behalf of Coca-Cola, I'd like you to present this trophy to you. A very fine effort. Thanks Thank you. very much. Thank you. Well, it looked pretty desperate out there. Well, uh, I think it was. Uh, I was trying to keep my eyes to the front um, rather than look in the mirrors. I think that's what a lot of the desperate stuff was. Uh, it was a great race. I you touched <laughs> a few times. Words. Yes. <laughs> Have you got a few marks on the car, or was it mainly tyres and so on that, that oh, bumped occasionally? I've got a bent axle, and uh, I'm sure the wheel alignment's out and lost a few things on the wheel there. But uh, What effect on the handling did that have? It uh, wanted to oversteer a bit after that. <laughs> it uh, wanted to bring the bum around all the time. And, uh, it was a bit funny, but it was, uh, it was the last lap, so is worthwhile persevering. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Atke, winner of the Coca-Cola Formula Series race, and it's a race we'll remember for a long time.